Good morning, my name is Renda Bloom. I'm the director of the Red Shoe Play Therapy Training Center in Bloemfontein, South Africa. This morning, I want to talk a little bit about trauma-focused play. Now, this is something that I learned from a trauma expert, uh, Dr. Eliana Gill, and um, she talks about trauma-focused play as something that you can implement that I consider maybe a little bit in between directive and non-directive play if a child has been traumatized and you've had several sessions and the child still um, has not reflect anything about the trauma. So what you would do is um, if you feel um, you've done your assessment and you feel that the child has the necessary ego strength. In other words, uh, you would not re-traumatize the child or the child would not uh, get a meltdown or be totally overwhelmed by the emotions that come up, is that before the child come in, you would take specific toys. Um, now, I've made an example here. Uh, uh, in this case, specifically, I've picked uh, doctor toys, like uh, there you see a puppet. Doc McStuff and Puppet, there you see all the doctor equipment. Um, there you also see a wounded person in a, um, in a wheelchair and Doc McStuff and, and a doctor kit. Um, here you see a dollhouse um, hospital. So if we can go a little bit closer, you will see in the hospital there's an x ray machine and there's a baby and a drip. And there's a person in a wheelchair that is wounded. And here we have a mother with a newborn baby and another baby and an incubator. And then there, there's a doctor and a dentist chair, etc. And then next to that, I've also put, uh, you know, more baby figures and other figures. There you have an ambulance and a bed for a, a patient. And then some um, disabled people um, and a doctor. Now, the example that I want to talk about here is that if you find that the child don't go to the specific trauma play, that you can make use of trauma focused play. And what you do is that before the session start, you will pick out or select specific toys that might be relevant to playing out um, this specific trauma. And what you would do then is that you would ask the child, if the child don't go there naturally, maybe in, in, in terms of directive play, you would ask the child, let's see if today we can make a story about this specific, uh, play a story with this specific toys. Let's, let's see, uh, you know, if we can play with today with the doctor kid and the ambulance and, and, and the, make a story about that. That would be one example. So depending on the child's trauma, in this specific case, it would refer to trauma that had to do with either maybe a car accident, maybe a person that's disabled or uh, any situation that was traumatic with an ambulance uh, was involved, where a hospital was involved and where doctors and doctor instruments was involved. Um, now, if we think about uh, cases like uh, maybe the child had, for example, uh, a near drown experience or something like that, then the toys that you select would be different toys. Now, because then you would maybe have an example of a swimming pool and children that is um, playing there at the swimming pool. So this, the example that I have to here is just one example of the, the toys that you can pick. So if the child start playing with that after you have suggested that, you just keep on reflecting what the child is doing and see what seems comes up. And um, maybe can work a little bit in between directive and non-directive play therapy in terms of after the child has played out a story, you can maybe make a statement in terms of, uh, for example, this sounds almost like what happened to you. Um, so that is one of the things that you can do. Another thing that you can do is that you can um, 
you know, maybe ask the child, you know, I wonder if something like this has happened to you in your life too. And depending on the child's answer, now if the child don't want to reflect on that, don't want to talk anymore about that, you would just leave it like that. Now, so, but it is almost like you want to a little bit assist the child to, to bring what, what was traumatic closer to the consciousness of the child. So what it is, is this toys is normally there now in that corner with the dollhouse. And now I've deliberately moved it here to the uh, red carpet so um, to direct the child's attention to that. So that is uh, more or less when we talk about trauma focus play. I just want to emphasize again that um, I would never do this with a child that still needs the symbolic space in terms of the traumatic event. So you have to make a, a good evaluation of the child's ego strength before you, you do this. But it can also be a great release to a child if the child can play out what happened and maybe then tell the story in this way. All right, thank you then.